Good afternoon, Europe. I am very pleased to be able to virtually join the Treatment Outcomes Conference in Zagreb today. Health and sustainable healthcare systems are key to achieve a Europe that develops, which is currently becoming very clear to us all. An OECD report on wasteful spending from 2017 suggests that about one fifth of health spending could be channeled towards better use. And the numbers show that many patients are unnecessarily harmed at the point of care. It also points at the fact that many patients receive unnecessary care that makes no difference to their health outcomes or that the same benefits could be provided by using fewer resources. People seek solutions that improve their health outcomes. Therefore, to put the focus on the patient and understand the unmet need or the unmet needs in patients with a certain medical condition, for example, cardiovascular disease, or in a segment of the population, for example, older persons, is key. We need to ask, what matters to you? To be clear, health outcomes are not structural metrics, not ticking a box that protocols or guidelines are followed, and not indicators like scores or surgical margins. It is not the experience of care asking patient, how were we? Outcomes are the actual results of care, including clinical measures such as survival rates and the complications during treatment. However, uh, the outcomes that matter most to patients are often how care affects their capabilities and quality of life. We therefore need to ask, how are you to fully cover all relevant health outcomes? Despite already collecting vast amounts of data, we to a large extent today lack such information. OECD has acknowledged the lack of outcomes in today's healthcare and been made mandated by its health ministers to make patient-centeredness the new normal in healthcare. The most important next steps we can take to improve healthcare in our countries are to ask patients what matters most to them and to ask them to assess the results of their care. What happens when you do this is clearly shown in the following well-known example. Localized prostate cancer has a very good survival, but what is important when surviving? When asking the patients two items stand out, to be able to live a life without diapers and to keep the sexual function. The graph shows a comparison between the average in Germany and the Martini Clinic in Hamburg where the Martini Clinic has tracked these health outcomes in their patients for many years now and developed techniques to dramatically lower these risks. As mentioned, it is also important to realize that many important health outcomes can only be reported by the patients themselves. On this slide, you see an analysis of clinical outcomes and patient reported outcomes from the Swedish cataract registry. In almost 10,000 patients, the vast majority, or 97.8%, showed clinical outcome improvement measured as improved vision. But 7.4% of these individuals reported being worse off in their daily activities than before treatment. How is this possible? When studying the results in further detail, it was found that the 7.4% were often old, many older than 90, and spent most of their time reading, doing handicraft and other activities depending on the near vision. The treatment regained their long vision, but no reading glasses were routinely given to the patients for near vision dependent activity, and their quality of life deteriorated compared to before treatment. This insight led to an improvement of the process, but also to a more informed discussion with the patient about their daily activities and how important the long vision is to the individual before the treatment was finally decided. In 2006, professors Michael Porter and Elizabeth Theisberg published a value equation where they argued the most important step 
to ensure value in healthcare is to start measuring these outcomes. If the health outcomes are not being delivered, it doesn't matter how much or how little you spend, the value is still zero. Some years later, in late 2012, Professor Porter's Institute for Strategy and Competitiveness at Harvard Business School co-founded as a non-profit organization, ICHOM, the International Consortium for Health Outcomes Measurement, to catalyze the development of standard sets of outcomes for medical conditions. The sets should be defined around medical conditions, not specialties or procedures, and directly involve patients in defining the outcomes to ensure outcomes that matter most to patients. A global language for health outcomes is now starting to become available, where time points and sources of data collection are defined, and a minimal set of initial condition risk factors uh, is included to help a meaningful comparison. In this example that you can see on the slide, the standard set for breast cancer, you find survival, disease control, but also the disutility of care, such as reoperation due to positive margins and acute complications to treatment. However, most telling, I find that the majority of the outcomes, if you look from 10 o'clock, from two o'clock to 10 o'clock in the set, are patient reported and they are focused on what matters most to the patient, pain, mental well-being, as well as physical well-being. So in summary, outcomes that matter most to patients are the true north. A systematic measurement of standard sets of outcomes by institutions around the world will enable global outcome comparisons and support healthcare professionals in identifying where the greatest outcomes are achieved, learning from processes, supporting those outcomes, promoting dissemination of the best practices and measurably improve outcomes that affect a patient's quality of life and dignity of death. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure joining and I'm looking forward to the questions and the discussion to follow.